Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Users Podcast episode. I'm not even sure where the hell we're at. Thirty some shit. I yeah, <laughs> I think it's like thirty seven. I don't I don't know. It's something. Yeah, I think it's I think around thirty seven. <laughs> anyway, I am Pegasus one eight seven. Now I'm Chrono Link Nine. Yeah, I'm, I'm here this time. <laughs> no weddings to interfere, right? That's right. I would ask you about the wedding, but of course I'm Jack Potzer, but I can't leave the guests in the line. I gotta say it's a full moon tonight because that's all. That's what I always like to say whenever OKS did a uh, live stream. I would always blurt that out. So, uh, Mike, how you doing, man? Good, man. It's good to be here. Good to have you, man. Sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I, <laughs> I had to do that. I miss. I miss hearing that, man. I miss hearing that. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Shit. Oh, well, let's go ahead and get the, the, the bullshit out of the way. When's the next OKS, Mike? Because you know the people want to know. And, you know we we got we to address this. Let's go ahead and get it out of the way. What's the, what's the deal with OKS? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a hard question to answer. Um, you know, right now it's pretty much on hiatus again. And so, uh, you know, Tim and I both agree that, you know, as soon as the new consoles come out, there's going to be a whole shit ton more to talk about at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, like it's kind of a time thing for us. Tim, Tim is more working on a, uh, he's working on his music channel again on YouTube, and yeah, he's actually, you know, he's having fun with that, and it's it's easy for him to manage. And uh, um, you know, like I mean, it's one of those things where we would like to record, but we're also afraid of it becoming stale. You know, I I, I personally would rather leave people wanting more. Than uh, you know, them thinking, oh man, this shit's still it's the same shit every week, you know. So, um, yeah, there will be more episodes, as far as I know. Uh, we we have talked about it, Tim and I. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping that there'll definitely be more in the future again, especially you know now that it's getting close to the uh, new consoles coming out, and it's yeah. you know getting close to the the winter months and everything, where more people are at home gaming. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's about the answer to the question, right? You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's cool. We, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, trust me, we we know all about hiatuses, so there's yeah. no rush. <laughs> but uh, well, we've got yeah. you here, and especially if y'all are going to be coming back with the new stuff. Me personally, I don't know about these two, but I like talking about the older shit more. So, what have you been mm-hmm. playing? Because I mean, I know it's got to be some older stuff. I know Atari and television for sure. But what what, what you been playing in these months? We haven't heard from you. Uh, yep. well, you know, last week. Hello? Hello. No. Oh, okay, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> like it just went dead for a second. Yeah, that yeah. was good. Yeah, I did hear that as well. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. Like, last week, I had a girl come over here, and she's, you know, big Mortal Kombat fan. And, you know, like, she even has, like, the get over here uh, Scorpion on her phone for her text messages. So, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I'm just like, well, dude, you got you to gotta come over. We're going to play some fucking Mortal Kombat. And so, you know, I turn on the Genesis, and I have, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 on Genesis. And so I, I, I pop the first one, and I'm just, like, bending my friend over my Genesis and raping. Like, it, it was just, it was fucking embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so she was just like, "Well, I thought I was much better at this," and I'm like, "Well, you thought wrong." <laughs> so, like, you know, we switch over to Mortal Kombat 2, and uh, she she does a little bit better uh, there, you know, and uh, and then we pop in three, and uh, she did a little bit better there, uh, but I still just completely killed her, like, <laughs> and I'm not very good at Mortal Kombat. I've never been a big fighter guy, uh, but no, I. Like, yeah, she was horrible. Like I was, I was standing there, like sweeping the leg over and over again to be a jackass, and you know, and like, uh, yeah, you know. So definitely, there's been a lot of Genesis going on lately. Um, I have like, I want to say like, well, I can count them here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Tw- I have twenty consoles hooked up Damn. that I can. Oh. Oh, switch nice. on it. Yeah, I can switch them on at any, you know, any moment I want to. I can switch on any of these consoles because, like, it, it got to the point for me that, you know, I kept having to like unhook one and hook another, and 
uh, some of my consoles actually got damaged sitting up on my display shelf because like the I, I would leave like the AC adapter like kind of dangling on top of it and like it like what the AC adapter for my Atari 7800 totally just like scratched up the silver part and I'm like oh fuck no man and so uh, basically what I did is I Walmart you know everybody's favorite store and uh, <laughs> picked up like these shelves for like 18 bucks a piece and I put three of them next to each other and they each have like the three shelves on them and I just like stuck my 42 inch HD TV on the, on the center one and then I got a 19 inch HD TV on the uh, right one that's on top of the surround sound uh, system and then uh, on the left of those I have the uh, like the old school under the monitor power sources you know so you got like the master and the printer and the computer and all that shit and the auxiliaries and uh, I just put I, I stacked like three of those up and ran those through a uh, like a, like a six pack uh, surge protected uh, power thing of a jigger and then I use a uh, automatic uh, AV switch from Radio Shack so and then that way all I have to do is just hit the power on the power source and then you know know that the console's already turned on and has a game and it'll pop up on my TV automatically. Uh, and so, uh, hmm, yeah, yeah. like, I mean, I just been like gaming it up, man, because like you know, you know, people have been coming over and games, which has been fun. Um, you know, I, I've been playing a lot of uh, Game Boy Advance games, like hmm. uh, through the uh, Game Boy Advance player on my GameCube, and that's been kind of fun because like I didn't really experience those games, and so to go back and experience them, you know, on a big TV and everything's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I, I've been really trying to get more in television games. Like I'm still doing my best to complete my Atari 2600 collection. Like I, I'm, I'm sitting at like, I want to say like 300 or so Atari 2600 games, and so uh, it's getting up there, you know. And it, it's to the point now that like I have a checklist and everything, and and when I go places, I I look for the games that you know aren't checked off. And it's it's really hard, man. Like, I mean, there's a lot of shops around where I'm at, around the, you know, in Colorado, and uh, like I still can't find any games that I need because it's to the point that it's only the games that are, you know, really rare and and uh, expensive. Like, uh, I, I'm trying to find the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game right now, uh, and like you can get like a repo cart for maybe twenty five, thirty bucks or something, but the real one's like a hundred and fifty or so. Oh wow. Um, was it like was so, it like one of those mail in ones or something or? Uh, it was made by a company that only put out games: Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and uh, uh, the other horror game. Yeah, Halloween. It, yeah, Halloween. Halloween. There it is. Yep. That. And so, uh, yeah. Is uh, is Texas Chainsaw? Is it like Halloween? That like, I'm not sure if all the Halloweens are like this, but like, basically, it's like a blank cart. Almost like a prototype, like it's just got like a sticker, like with a marker written "Halloween" is Texas Chainsaw like that. Because I know they're both rare as shit. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I remember. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember nice. watching the nerds review on those. I had no idea those games were that rare. <laughs> oh yeah, they are definitely hard to Oof. come by, man. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, and like it, the uh, adult pornographic games, like those have been hard to come by as well. Yeah, I can see why. Uh, some, some good old oh, beat 'em and eat 'em there. Oh, right. there's a yeah. beat him and eat him level in the ABGN Adventures game. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? my god, I love that game. That is, that is so awesome. Fun. Y'all yeah. like this? Uh, there's there's a uh, like a porn shop local. It's on Highway 69. It's called Fantasyland, and it's been there for years, <laughs> like probably twenty plus years. Anyway, the point is. Is I called probably a year, two years ago, and I felt like such a jackass because, because <laughs> you know, back then you usually got those beat immediate the the porno games like from porn places or rental shops. So basically, right. I was like, "What the hell?" You know, you go to these thrift stores, you try to get these games. I figured, "What the hell?" It didn't hurt to ask. So I called one day and I was like, "Do you have any, you know, basically porn video games?" And, like, a younger girl answered. She didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. She was like, uh, no. And, babe, the point of the story is, you know, you gotta take that risk. You don't know till you ask. But I felt like such a fucking creep asking. Because I didn't specify Atari or anything. Like, I was just some fucking weirdo. Like, you got any, you know, porn video games? 
it, it always stood out. And I was just like, damn, I just felt like such a fucking creep after that. But uh, <laughs> but it would have been worth it if they would have had them. But you know, you got to take that risk. But uh, man, I stopped going to porn stores because there just isn't a reason anymore. You know, like I mean, unless you're gonna get like a dildo to play with or something. You know, like I mean, like I don't know. Like I mean, <laughs> yeah. who the fuck who pays for porn now? You know, like I mean, really? yeah. Yeah, those big boxes. You can get on your phone, <laughs> click, click, porn. There you go. Yeah, the uninitiated, right. the uninitiated still pay for it. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's been years. Uh, in like the past ten years, I've probably gone twice. And last time I went with the chick, and she got like a dildo and a feather. But other than that, like even the video selection, I remember one that always stood out because it was just because it used to be funny to go in there and laugh at the shit. But one of the movies was yeah. called Teabagging with Mr. Cooper. <laughs> which, was a, which was a spinoff of Hanging with Mr. Cooper, the TV show. Oh my god. <laughs> Teabagging with Mr. Cooper. But yeah, I agree with you, man. The internet, you don't need to go. You can get that shit free now, oh, unless you get one of those fucking harness things or something. But anyway. Right, yeah. Like a sex swing or yeah. something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those way of the past. Yeah. See, like, like, that's the only reason to go. Is if like you're going to like take a woman there or something, you guys are going to pick out something to play with or something. But... Other than that, like, I mean, unless you, like, run out of lube, which you can actually get at, like, Walmart and shit now, too. Um, you know, like, there isn't really much of a reason to go to the porn store. Except, except, okay, here's a story for you. Uh, so I was talking to this chick, like, and this is several years ago, you know, talking to this chick off a crazy list of all fucking places to find a woman, right? Um, she wanted me to go with her to the porn, star, porn store and watch her suck dicks through a glory hole. What? And she's like, you know, and she's like, and maybe you can get something too. And I'm just like, I don't know about that, man. Like, uh, so like, I mean, she never gives me a picture of herself, right? You know, but I take her email, I'm looking it up, and I'm looking at, at different, you know, with this email and everything. And I find this picture of this really like, like beefy, like, like construction worker looking lady. Like she fucking is more man than me kind of lady, you know? And I'm just like, Holy shit, this bitch suck cocks through glory holes. Like, <laughs> you know, and you'd never think it, you know, I, I wouldn't look at her and think that she would do that. You know, I would think that she, I don't know, maybe smashes beer hands on her forehead or something, you know, but like, I wouldn't think about her sucking dicks through holes, you know? Like, so I told this lady though, I told her, I was like, you know what we could do, is because I don't know if there is a glory hole. What I could do is I could get a piece of cardboard and I could cut a hole in it and stick my dick through it and it'd be like the same thing. <laughs> but yeah, so like, I don't know. I mean, you know, obviously I never met up with the lady because, you know, she scared me. Any woman with like man hands just fucking creeps me out, man. man so was, That was a good call, man. Because some, some chicks, they like to feel... They don't like to swallow. They like to fill that shit up with champagne glasses. This one, she could have been like filling up a yeah, yeah, construction you know, hat with a. <laughs> yeah, you know that would make sense. You know, like I, I could, I could see that happening actually. God. I got a good visualization of that. As a matter of fact, hmm. the whole like Mick Foley cut off flannel shirt, flannel yeah, shirt, right. <laughs> riding the boat boots and everything. You know, like steel toes. <laughs> oh man. But no, that is a good point because it is funny because if if you want to go back to gaming, you can't think of porn shops, you know, like big box PC games and everything going digital. The porn industry is going digital, so it's it's a, it's a forgotten pastime. But Chrono, have you ever been to a porn shop? Just oh curious. no, no. I'm like I'm like I'm I'm 22. <laughs> yeah, but when you turn 21, you, you at least got to go check one out. Well, I don't I don't I don't, know I don't even know I don't even know where they are around here. Or even around, I, yeah, I don't know. I generally try to not go there. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, it's pro you're probably better off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, Nick, you ever been to one? Once, mm. and that was <laughs> after I turned eighteen. That was probably five years ago. Mm. It's worth it's worth going when you become of age. Of course, no. Younger listeners need to try to sneak into one, but it's at least go at least go once for laughs, I guess. But uh, oh, what yeah. the hell? There was that. There's that one. Damn. No, there's a there's a store in a mall. It's it's not it's not a sex shop, but it is. Like like Spencer's. Yeah, Spencer's. There we go. I went I went in there once. That was entertaining. That was that oh, was yeah. very entertaining. Yeah, they got some like little gag gifts there. Like, yeah. Oh like, yeah. Like, like suckers that are cocks, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like a sucker cock or whatever, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And handcuffs, you know, there's always like the yeah, fuzzy handcuffs. Hand- yeah, for there you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> So I can so I can only imagine the uh, the porn the porn shop being that except oh wait this is actually real stuff <laughs> tea bagging with Mr Cooper yeah exactly tea bagging with Mr yeah. Cooper <laughs> like I saw one the other day like I was in this um I was in this pawn shop right and they do this deal where they have this trivia question on their Facebook and if you can answer the trivia question they give you a free DVD. Uh, which I usually, I go down there and I just pick out a DVD for somebody else because I don't collect DVDs anymore, you know. But, um, like, so then, like, he was mentioning an adult section. And, you know, I've been there several times. I've never seen the adult section before. And then, uh, like, as soon as he pointed it out, I say out, but I'm like, hey, well, now I got to go in there, right? You know, like, I mean, <laughs> now that I know about it. And so I go in there and I'm on the phone. And I'm talking to a chick I've known for, you know, years. And uh, I was like, oh. Dirty Sluts 4. But I can't... How, how can I buy this unless I have 1 through 3? You know? I mean, there might be, like, key details in the plot that I that I miss, you know? And I don't even know what the fuck's going on, you know? Oh, I just thought of one. You, you'll appreciate this one, Chrono. I'm not sure. You you got you and my Jumble Junkie probably talked about this. Either you guys talked about it on OKS, or maybe uh, Tim talked about it when he was on All Gen Gamers. But uh, Lore... Was it Lord of the G-Strings? I was about to mention, yeah, Lord of the G-Strings. <laughs> yeah, G-Strings. That yeah. soft porn yeah, piece right. of shit. That, that, that was, I remember like a bunch of my friends were into that one night. And it's, the only thing I remember, I remember Gandalf was smearing off. And I think Bill, uh, Dildo Baggins. But it, it was horrible. <laughs> Production quality, everything. It was, it was a disgrace, even from an editing standpoint. It was a... Uh, wow. You could get it like at Movie Gallery. That's where we were in it. We didn't go back then. But shit, thinking of it now... Most blockbusters and movie galleries and play, normal video rental places, they've already closed locally. But yeah. when they were open, they always had the back room. And uh, I don't know, the only even, yeah, Chrono, don't go to a porn shop. Because the creepiest thing about it is, <laughs> is when you're in there, even if you're in there with a chick or you're in there with friends, looking around laughing, there's always somebody that's in there that's like serious about their purchases. And it's just like a creepy vibe, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah, not saying I mean, it's that's all gen- creepy, but you know, there there is some weird shit that goes on in there. But yeah, yeah, I mean, that's generally why yeah. why I, I you know I I stay away from that just because it's like, you know, I live in a small part of the country, so it's like, <laughs> I don't want to run into anyone I know in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be like, oh, you shop here? Seriously? Okay, didn't need to know that about that you. Might, <laughs> that might be a good thing for you, though, man. Like, I mean, I wonder if you need some fuzzy handcuffs, and then your friend can just lend you some. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I wonder if it's a hot chick. You know, I wonder if your friend is a hot chick, and she's just yeah, like, yeah, well, that's... you know, we've known each other for a while, and I got all these like handcuffs and dildos and shit. You might as well come over. You know, <laughs> my advice for the future, Chrono, unless she's really hot, don't get into that S and M shit unless you're into it, because otherwise, I don't want to get the shit beaten out of me. You know, <laughs> oh jeez, yeah, I'm not, I'm not into that. I don't know. You know, I thought that until I, until somebody, you know, did it. And then I'm just kind of like, whoa, hey, well, I got a bigger boner going on right now. And, I, you know, it's, it's this is working. Well, let me ask so. you this, Mike. Have you ever been, because this, this is the extent of the shit that I go through with chicks. Have you ever been with a girl that really likes you, like, to pull her hair? Not like oh, yeah. the shit out of, okay, okay. You're pulling the hair Absolutely. is one thing, but, like, now, slapping you know, the shit out of it is another. You know? One of the last <laughs> chicks that I fucked, actually, requested that I strangle her. <laughs> as she was coming and i'm and so like i'm just like do i do this you know do i really strangle a bitch you know like and so like fucking what i did is i just kind of put like my forearm down on her throat like i was pinning her you know like wrestling style and i just kind of like squeezed down a little bit more you know and i kept thinking am i going past the limits here am i killing her or is she cool with this you know but like i mean she was totally cool with it and she was just like I, i'm so glad that you're is not a pussy like the last guy and <laughs> yeah, so uh it's nice to not be a pussy compared to the last guy, I guess, you know? So uh well, yeah, good that's for the me. Thing. If they're into it, you know, you, you gotta No, do you know, if they're can. into it, that's one thing. If you if they're not into it, then you can't do it, man. That's like <laughs> that is, uh, this is funny because I like I like the way this episode's going. And by no means me me and Mike appreciate women, we love women. We're not trying to, you know, objectify women, but this reminds me of a story back uh back when I was in high school. 
a friend of mine was dating a chick for a long time, and she was into that stuff, and she was actually into the hitting, and she was like, hit me, and he actually like jabbed her once and knocked her out. <laughs> and the funny thing is, 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 he felt bad because he kept going, and I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. That's like that's like a step above fucking a dead bitch. Like some some bitch that just died mm. and you're like fucking them while there's heat left in them or something. Uh, like I mean seriously, cool. that's like some like twisted shit, dude. Yeah. That's like clerks in the bathroom shit, man. Right, yeah. <laughs> like I mean that would be like the equivalence of going to a Kager and drugging a chick and raping her almost, dude. Like I mean that's that's pretty close to it. Hmm. Well, they were in a good uh, relationship for like three or four years, but it was... Oh, well, okay, well, you know, I mean, if it's like that, then that's like no different than like, like, if you ever like wake a bitch by sticking your dick up in her, <laughs> like, like, wake up, you know, like, like, <laughs> some of them like that, you know, like, yeah, trust me, you gotta spit on your dick first, though, because you're usually not wet, because, you know, why would they be, right, you know? It's like... <laughs> if they are, either you got a, you got a strange one. You got to keep one eye open at night, or, or you got to keep her. I don't know. She might have been dreaming about you. Who knows, yeah. right? No, like... <laughs> oh, man, let's go back to video games because I, I don't, don't, don't want to corrupt. Yeah, well, like, I don't well, want to corrupt get Chrono video too games much. To, to, to porn. To, yeah. No, I don't know. from Atari to Atari porn to this. So there's oh, the to, uh, to fucking chicks who are unconscious. Knocked yeah. out. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's my fault. But let, let me go back. Let me ask you this sinister move because. Either, like, in the past week or so, you posted, like... Because I know, I know you talked about this in OKS. Like, you, like your local scene, I don't know if it's through, like, Craigslist or, like, the thrift stores or just, like, collectors locally. But you've been managing to, like, acquire a bunch of stuff and, like, you know, not pawn it off or trade it off to further your collection or other means. And the point I'm getting at is because, like, there was one picture, like, you had cleaned, like, literally, like, 10 or 15 NESs. And like you've got, it just seems because you get. I mean, you know all that soldering shit. I don't know anything about all that shit, but it's cool to know that you know you can do all. You you, can, you have access to that stuff. You can like you know fix all that stuff, bring it back to life, trade it for further means, or just kind of give it to people who appreciate you know getting into retro, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I do different gigs. You know, when it comes to video games, uh, like uh, one of my gigs, the one that you're actually talking about, I um, work or an ebay seller Mm -hmm. and uh what he does is he goes out and he buys these consoles that are you know on their very last legs like and so he can get them for super cheap and then he uh pays me to go in there and uh fix them and clean them and uh, and then he throws them up on ebay and you know he sells them for a a decent price and he you know he's actually one of the good ebay sellers that actually sells things for reasonable buy it now prices and and uh you know i i I believe in what he's doing. I think he's a good guy and everything. You know, he's not some asshole that's just out there trying to rip everybody off and, you know, sell them, you know, these consoles that haven't been tested and, you know, like, maybe, like, I don't know, whatever, you know. But, like, they're they're good working consoles, you know. And, uh, of course, you know, I put my name on them, so, you know, I know that they work. Um, but, yeah, like, it's fun, you know. It's fun working for him. And uh, he, he just brings in so much video game stuff. And aside from video game stuff, he's he's more into like uh, old like older toys, and so like he has like a box like huge boxes just full of action figures, man. Like he, like some of the shit that he had just really took me back, man. Like he had like the old uh, Dick Tracy figures, and he had like like a shit ton of old wrestling figures and all the Ninja Turtles and He Man and. Uh, you name it. Like he he had so many of them, man. And like we're like setting them up, making them fuck each other in the ass and everything, you know. And, <laughs> and uh, we're just like, fuck yeah, this is awesome, you know. But like, we can't like let his wife catch us, you know, because then, then if the, if his wife wife sees us, and then she's like, you're supposed to be working, you know, like, like oh come on, man, you know. But yeah, you know, so that's a good gig. Like I like getting paid to, you know, play video games pretty much, you know. Like I like um. Uh, when I did those Nintendos, I actually did about 30-some. Uh, and, you know, some of them, like, were uh, really, really bad, really grimy. Had to clean the boards, had to replace the 72-pin connector. Uh, I, I went through and I disabled the uh, lockout chip on most of them. And so, like, you know, they'll, they'll work a little bit better. Like, I mean, they'll actually r- work really good now. And, 
you know, it's fun cleaning them. And like, I, I would, I used Mario three as my tester, and so I just went through and did Mario three on like thirty Nintendos. Um, and it, you know, it's fun, you know. And then afterwards, I went through and I cleaned. I, I want to say like uh, about seven hundred NES games, you know. So like, uh, you know, it, it's it's fun working for him. But you know, on on the other hand, when I when I do things for myself, uh, what I typically do is uh, I'll pick up consoles and games, and I, I will fix them or clean them, and I'll just give them away most of the time, man. Like because it's one of those things, like you know, I I could go somewhere and I could pick up like Conker's Bad Fur Day, which is like a sixty seventy dollar game now. Wow. And I could pick it up for like three dollars or something, right? And I could clean it up, make sure it works. I already have that game, and so I could, you know, I could trade it in and get a, some Atari games or whatever, you know. But sometimes, like, it's just more fun to give somebody a game that you absolutely know that they're going to appreciate that you only spent like three fucking dollars on, but they would have to spend seventy dollars on elsewhere, you know, and you know that they're going to really appreciate it. Oh, you know, and like, and I love doing that, man. Like, you know, and it's one of those things that it's very rewarding, you know. And like, and sometimes, like, I have people sending me out stuff, you know, and I'll, I'll get this like game in the mail or whatever, and I'll be like, "Holy shit, man! Somebody sent me out a game. That's so cool," you know. Hmm. But uh, yeah, like I, I mean, pretty much my whole life revolves around video games, you know. Like, I mean, it, like if I'm not like getting paid to fix video game consoles, I'm collecting games and if i'm not doing that then i'm playing games you know like <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah no it's definitely awesome it's, it's, it's cool that you can you know benefit from that plus like you said cleaning the pins replacing the 72 pins soldering all that stuff it's, it's that's good knowledge to know down the line anyway because you know these machines are already like 20 30 years old you know mm -hmm. in another 20 or 30 years it's, it's going to be damn <clears throat> valuable to know how to fix all that shit <laughs> to begin with you know that kind of bring something up at me that I've been putting a lot of thought into lately is um, yeah, I'm working with a guy that owns a game store here locally and uh, him and another guy and I are all working together on this project where we're doing uh, NES repo carts mm. and the thing about them is, is they're fucking cool as hell and you know some games like that have been translated and everything like JRPGs like that have been translated uh, you can slap these into a repo cart and get you know, anywhere from 60 to like $120 a piece for these things. And uh, the thing is, though, is like each of them require an existing board. You know, so like uh, Mario 2 has a board in it. Super Mario Brothers 2 has a board in it that's very sought after by certain games uh, for repo people. And so like, and then there's also um, uh, uh, Batman versus the Joker. Which is kind of a harder game to find already. It's not rare or nothing, but it's kind of harder to find than you know, like Mario Brothers or something. Mm -hmm. Like, um, there's a certain board in there that you need to make this other game, and I forget which game it is, but it's it's like an it's like a JRPG. And so basically, what I'm what I'm trying to get at here is eventually, reproduction people are gonna exhaust their resources, you know, and eventually. Games like Super Mario Brothers 2 and Joker, or Batman vs. the Joker, are going to be rare because everybody's going to use them up for repo carts. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, they're going to have to figure out, you know, hopefully sooner than later, they'll figure out how to just, you know, produce these boards in mass quantities, you know, so then yeah. people can just buy them off of eBay or something yeah. instead of, you know, using the original shit. Because, like, I mean, the more we all use the original shit that, you know, the less original shit there's going to be. So true. Yeah. Let me ask you this, like on the, like Mario two, for instance, are these boards, do they have like the EPROMs, like the windows on there? Is it, is it that route or is it something different? Oh uh, yeah. You know, I mean, they have EPROMs in there and you have to, you know, you, you have to buy EPROMs like, like the ones with the little window. Those are the ones that you can actually burn onto yeah. still. Like it, and the ones that are inside the boards, now you, you can't rewrite them. They're they're just they are what they are, mm. and so you got to desolder those, take those out, you know, burn your new EPROM, solder those into the place. You know, it's it's a little bit of work, but once you get it down, uh, you know, you can bust them out pretty quick. Like I could probably bust out like one repo cart per hour complete. Nice. So mm. well, that's cool for you at least, because like you said, you know, 
Well, you know, you could you could play the ROMs on an emulator on your PC, but then again, sure. Especially in your situation, you can just flat out burn them and play them on the original console, which is mm. definitely more appealing. Which you know, we don't have to justify any of that. But uh, okay, right. Let me let me ask you this, and I'll let the other guys ask you some questions. But uh, since you're like an Intellivision guy, I've never played the Intellivision. What are like some? I would say, uh, well, just good titles in general. I would lean towards the cheaper side, but I might pick mm -hmm. one up in Portland. And just like, because I'm really not, the only game I really know of is the baseball game, and that's because, you know, the famous commercial. I'm really not too, <laughs> I don't really know too much about the it. The one where they uh, compare their baseball to Atari baseball? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which does yeah. look a lot better, but uh, yeah, well, way better, yeah. Was I know you did a review? Was the burger time? Was it mm -hmm. was that in a television port? Because it actually uh, looked pretty good. Well, I I did a, uh, I did burger time. I reviewed that first, uh, and then later on I went and reviewed burger time for the TI ninety nine four A, and that one's not as good uh, as the Intellivision one. The Intellivision one's probably the best in my opinion. Like I mean, it, it you know if you want it to look more like the arcade version, then you want the ColecoVision one. But if you want just a better experience overall, then you want the Intellivision one. Mm. So, um, yeah, as far as your question goes, um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is definitely one that you have to have. Uh, Burger Times is another good one to have. Uh, Tron Deadly Disc is an amazing game. And, uh, you know, there's all the uh, voice... Uh, uh, modulated games, which are all pretty fun. Uh, there's Space Spartans and Bomb Squad and uh, B-52 Bomber and yep. uh, Tron Solar Sailor is an amazing game. Um, you know, and there's uh, He-Man. He-Man's on the Intellivision and He-Man's amazing on the Intellivision. It knocks the socks off the Atari one, in my opinion. Um you know, there, there's, like, so many of them, man. Like, I mean, uh, there's a lot of games that are, like, kind of harder to get to that are, you know, pretty costly. Like, there's, like, Stadium Mud Buggies, I believe is what it, what it's called. And that's, like, a $225 game with a box, you know? Like, mm. yeah. So, I mean, uh, ah, shoot, yeah, there's a lot of good games for the Intellivision. Like, uh, the thing is, though, is, like, there's only, like, 125 games officially released for the Intellivision. So you can get, like, the... Uh, you know the uh, um, fan ba uh, fan release games. You know later on, like the independent games or whatever. But like, uh, yeah, like I mean, so it, it's pretty easy to get the 125. Uh, I'm sitting on a little more than half of that, um, just because I, I kind of I sat in television down for a second while I focused on my Atari collection. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I planned it. I definitely plan to be in the 125 club. Um, that's that's for awesome. sure. That's um, you know that's cool that you mentioned in television though, because I was actually um, I was talking with Keith Robinson the other day, who is the uh, president of uh, Intellivision. Like he owns all the rights to the Intellivision stuff and everything. And uh, you know I was talking with him and uh, Dave Warhol, who is um, he uh, worked for. They both worked for Intellivision, and now they have new gigs going on. You know. But, uh, yeah, legendary programmers. And, and I'm just, like, sitting around talking to these dudes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the uh, the, the uh, games that were uh, that they put out for the Vita and the PS3, the uh, kind of, like, revamped versions of, like, Astro Smash and Night Stalker. And, and those are a couple other really good games to have, Night Stalker and Astro Smash. And, and also Shark Shark, another good one. Um but yeah, so we're talking about how they remade those, and and we're actually discussing how much to charge for them and everything before they hit the market, and and uh, you know once they put them out, it was one of those things where it's just like, oh man, this is awesome, and I bought them all like instantly, you know, um, nice. and I still play on them; they're still fun, you know. I I prefer the originals, uh, especially since I have it. I AV modded my Intellivision, and so um, nice. Yeah, yeah, like the video signal on it's just so nice, man. Like, and I, I like every time I play it, it's like a new experience because you don't have to worry about all those, uh, you know, interference, scan lines and shit going on, you know. And like, so, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I I play the originals over any kind of revamped version or redone version or whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, like, I mean, I I, I definitely think that if you're gonna get an Intellivision, you should get the Intellivision one. 
the first one because I believe the controllers to be a better quality. Uh, the Intellivision 2, a lot of people think that's the better choice because, because it came out later. And you would think that it's one of those deals where uh, since it came out later, it's kind of like, you know, people, they think about modern consoles. And modern consoles, you know, they, they flop out this big beast of a console and then, you know, they make updates to it and they make it smaller and better and more efficient. That wasn't how shit ran back then. Back then it was, okay, we're losing life on this console. Let's throw out a new one that's more cost effective. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and so in other words, it's a cheaper version of it. You know that came later, and so it's it's by no means better than the original one. Um, yeah. But you know, if you can find it cheap, just make sure it has the the original power adapter because it uses like some funky adapter that I think I want to say it's like fourteen volts or something like that. It's it's definitely different than than any other console AC adapter. So it's it's kind of hard to find those. You know. Mm-hmm. But, like, I mean, yeah, you know, like, I mean, other consoles, other, you know, other consoles, they went through the same process. Like, um, a lot of people, and this is debatable, like, a lot of people will say that the Model 2 NES is better than the uh, Model 1 because it eliminates the uh, the pin, the uh, the tray and everything. But the thing is, is, like, the video was actually shittier on it. Like, you know, like, it showed, like, these, like, lines that go up and down on the screen, and it just looks like crap compared to the original. Yeah, it didn't, it, I don't think the top loader had AV you needed. No. You, you'd have to, like, mod no. it. No. It that. didn't. And no, it didn't. I, somebody told me that there was a model that had it, but I haven't seen it. And, you know, like, uh, uh, I know of a lot of, a lot of people that have modded theirs, you know, to have it. But, like, the thing is, is the video encoder still isn't going to be as high quality as the original and so you're better off just getting an original and you know replacing the 72 pin connector and whatnot the original looks better anyways yeah it does yeah i have both i have both the top loader which i used for years i thought my other nes was crap and then i found one that actually worked at my mom's place so (laughs) on my uh, punch out review that's actually where i recorded a lot of that footage on was that model one nes so nice even like the model two genesis which I'm not going to go into that why I don't like it, but I think even the sounds like Sacrifice compared to Model 1s. Yeah, oh yeah, it it's, is. It's, it's the yeah. same thing. It's like, yeah, the, the the systems were already out. The people who bought them pretty much already bought them, so they were just, they were they were cheaper means, and that's a good comparison to like modern consoles you made. And plus, like Genesis, we share that same regard to like even like Atari and television, Mike. It's like right. just those older games you could pop in for like 10, 15 minutes and play them and have just as much fun than you know mm-hmm. all this modern shit but uh but uh chrono nick y'all got any questions oh i i do i have, I have a question i guess the question we're all dying to ask okay. mike what interesting drink are you drinking <laughs> oh <laughs> interesting drink in my drink I, I have the sarsaparilla in front of me right now it's mm. uh you know I, I forget who makes the sarsaparilla but i i picked it up at one of those stores that um i don't know how to say it. it's it's like a it's owned by Mexican Americans, so they can sell Mexican products, you know. And so, mm-hmm. like, I, I I had my friend go in there with me because she speaks Spanish, because she's a Mexican, and uh, you know, like, uh, she she did all the wheeling and dealing, you know. I I just I went in there and I got the sarsaparilla and I got a uh, Pepsi, which is the Pepsi from Mexico, and so the Pepsi from Mexico has real sugar in it as opposed mm. to high fructose corn syrup, mm. right. And so it has a better taste to it all altogether, and uh, yeah, way better. You know, like I mean, like I, I usually buy the Mexican cokes from yeah, Sam's the, Club, and I is, yeah, same they come thing, in a real sugar. Yeah, same thing. You know, and so it's nice to have the Pepsi one. You know, every now and then. Um, but yeah, this sarsaparilla here, like I, I, I would tell you who makes it, but. I don't speak Spanish, and I, this word looks really complicated. <laughs> but it, but it's sarsaparilla. It's good. Uh, it's refreshing. And I also have some water sitting off to the side here, which I haven't even touched because I've been so involved uh, talking. Nice. You, know? you know, the no. funny thing is I'm drinking that Remune soda right now. At, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that Japanese import right. stuff with the marble that Holly was talking about way back. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, like, I mean... I, Every time I get one of those, like, and I still buy those pretty often. I want to, I buy one, like every 
two and a half weeks or so, I think. Um, I always debate on if I should break that that fucking bottle open and keep the marble or not. <laughs> and I'm like, should I keep these? But then I always come to the conclusion that what what the hell am I going to do with these marbles? And so I just throw it away, you know. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was weird because someone came because I work at a grocery store. Uh, grocery store. Someone came through my line with it, and I'm like, wait a minute, that looks familiar. And I, I take a look at, oh, wait, it's that Japanese import soda Holly was talking about on OKS. Sure, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, well, um, here they, one. Yeah, here they sell them at uh, King Supers, and they sell them in the Asian aisle, as they put yeah. it. And <laughs> so, like, they, they are. yeah. Mm. Yeah, so you just go in there, and, you, and there's all this Asian food around you, you know, like, uh, and then all of a sudden, bam! There's there's that. <laughs> so, yeah. Like uh, here they have the original flavor, and then they have uh, strawberry. Yeah, and that's actually I, what I'm drinking is strawberry. Yeah, I like the strawberry, uh, but I think I like the original slightly more. Um, but yeah, they're both good. Like yeah, I definitely dig them both. Like like lately, I've been having some interesting drinks. Like I've been uh, like if you go to like Burger King, you can get these like um, like smoothie kind of deals. And then you take them home and he dumps like some like te- some like tequila and some rum in them, Ooh. and you blend them <laughs> up, you know, and like and so and then you have this this really high quality alcoholic frozen drink. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but you've only paid like you know like like four dollars for everything, you know, and so it's it's pretty cool. Like I, I like to do that. I like to go to different places and and try to mix drinks, you know, like some places like Sonic have um like. Like sh- like drink shots, you know, so you can put the different flavors in them and shit. You know, mm-hmm. so you get like a cherry limeade with like a shot of strawberry, and then you can put like a shot of like whiskey in it or something. And I, with, now whiskey would taste horrible with that, but like I, you can put a shot of something in it. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you. you know, so like I mean, it's fun, you know, and like chicks dig it, you know. Trust me, man. Like you, know, you get like some booze and, and a fancy drink, and you mix it together, and you make a fancier drink, and bitches be yeah, impressed. There you go. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I'm no. always more of a Jack and Coke guy type deal. So yeah, yeah. sure. You no, know, my... the thing is, the thing is about whiskey though is, as uh, there's that thing called whiskey dick, and it's a very <laughs> yeah. weird, man. You know, so yeah, you don't want to. <laughs> You don't want to fuck up your. You don't want to press your luck there. Real quick, Chrono. Yeah. I know you're gonna say something. Let me just say this real quick. Uh, yeah. yeah, Mike. I think one of my favorite OKS moments was um, the time you guys actually had Metal Jesus on, and you just reminded me of that. I think I forgot what the exact quote was, but you you said something to Metal Jesus. You were like whiskey dick musicians, or, or <laughs> like drunk musicians <laughs> with whiskey dick or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, you yeah, gotta, yeah, you gotta look out for that whiskey dick, though. But. It's been so long since you know I've recorded that episode that I don't even really remember what I said to Metal Jesus. Oh, but yeah. uh, that one yeah, that was... stood out though. It's a truth. <laughs> you gotta watch out for that whiskey dick. And speaking yeah, yeah. back to Chrono, I know you're about to say something, but Chrono, don't get carried away because Mike, I don't know. When we started this podcast like a year, year and a half ago, Mike, uh, Chrono, he was an upright citizen. He didn't drink at all. And now he, he's been slowly nursing the nipple that is beer. And we don't want to get him carried away too far. But then again, like I said, Mike's got a good point with these uh, mixed drinks. You want to impress the ladies one night. Sneak off campus and get wet, as I used to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, no, I was going to well, I was gonna talk about this drink that my brother uh, uh, sort of invented um and it was the uh he calls it canadian lifeblood and essentially <laughs> what it essentially what it is it's royal crown maple whiskey with okay. pepsi throwback specifically pepsi throwback okay and huh. it's very very good i speak very that, you know no that sounds good it sounds yeah. like a good sweet drink and i it's, like that like it's pretty uh, nice yeah yeah, yeah, I could definitely get into that like i mean if you're gonna like go for beers like if you're into like beers like like, I live in Fort Collins, Colorado, and it's, like, a total beer snob town. We have, like, like I want to say, like, four or five uh, breweries in town, like, including, like, some of the bigger ones, like Budweiser is here. And, and I've been on the Budweiser tour through the through the uh, brewery, and it, it's actually pretty fun. They give you free beer at the end and stuff. But um, if you really wanted to go, like, beer snob and get yourself some good beers, like, I'd always check locally. You always want to check, like, the local beers out because oh, yeah. local beers – like or they tend to just be better quality, and you know, like I think the secret ingredient is love or something because like they taste extra good. 
Oh yeah, and, no, I totally, uh, I totally agree. There's um, there's a when I'm back at home, there's one that's that's a brewery in Windsor, Vermont, which is like 15 minutes down the road, and they make a harpoon. Um, mm. And uh, I love their they they make a stuff they call UFO. It's their un, unfiltered offering, I guess, is what the yeah. UFO stands oh, for. Oh yeah, it's, actually, it's a, yeah, I've heard of hef- this beer. Hefeweizen. Yeah. Um, and it's it's yeah. very very good. I you know. That's one of my favorites. So yeah, you know that's funny that you bring that one up because I was uh, talking with Mark, uh, Mark from Classic Game Room not too long ago about that beer. Like him and I like to talk beer when we play PlayStation. So, mm. but uh, nice. yeah, you know, like I mean, uh, if you want to get into some like IPAs, like those are like you know those are your strong beers right there. You know, those are like gross some fucking hair on your balls kind of beers. <laughs> yeah. So you know, like I mean, like think about like. Uh, like 10% beer, you know, mm. like the good IPAs. Like, so, uh, you know, that's, that's what you really want to do. Like if you really want to like spend your money on like a good beer where you like, you can drink two and just be good, you know, get a, get a good IPA. Yeah. Yeah. My, my brother, my brother doesn't speak very highly of IPAs, but my dad likes IPAs a lot. So, um, mm. he's been trying to get me to, to try those. So, um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give it a shot. Certainly. What else you guys got for me? I don't know. I actually have to leave because I have to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Unfortun- shit. Unfortunately, so. Oh, um, I need some beer. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck work. Let's know, just right? go get a beer. I know, right? <laughs> I wish. Don't tempt, <laughs> don't tempt him, Mike. Don't Fuck, tempt go him. To, go to work. fucking work drunk. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, you work at a porn store or something? It'll work, it'll work out, man. <laughs> no, I work, at, I work where I have to read people's papers, so that would be really interesting. See, what you I have want, to read yeah. other students' papers, and like, it's a it's the writing center essentially. So, I'm a writing tutor, so that could be entertaining. Well, uh, here you started talking <laughs> about some fucking I don't to take the paper away, take it back, <laughs> get, get out of sound my like face. Me a couple weekends ago, when I was at this lake house, and I just got ridiculously wasted. Pretty much drinking beer since about 10 a.m. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, we, uh, while you were there, while you were there, did you pull some Keanu Reeves shit and like do all that Lake House shit? You've seen that movie, right? I don't think I have Lake House. No. Am I alone <laughs> on this one? What? Is I think so. Lake, I think is so. that what it's called? Lake House. I think it is. Like, is, isn't it? Like, where like he sends like that chick a letter and then like oh, she gets oh, it in the past or some shit or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I know yeah. What no, I don't yeah, have seen that. That movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go on, man. Let's let's hear about your story there. I'm sorry, I well, cut you off. Pretty much, uh, well, the original plan is we're going to go camping up by a lake, and then two days later, my buddy calls me. He's like, well, we're going to be at this lake house because this girl that plays basketball here at University of Great Falls, her parents own this lake house. So we go up Friday night, have a few, and then the next day, I pretty much start drinking at, what, 10 a.m.? We go out on the boat, start tubing, wakeboarding, and spend a good five, six hours on the boat. I ended up getting completely fucking sunburned because I didn't put on sunscreen. Oops. So, mistake. Yeah. <laughs> and it pretty much just by the by the time we got back and like 8 o'clock, I started hitting the Jack Daniels. <laughs> so, it wasn't a good combination because I ended up puking by the end of the night. So, it was interesting. <laughs> well, you know the rhyme, right? You got to know the rhyme. Liquor before beer, never fear. Beer before liquor, make you sicker. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I think I remember. I think I might have got that mixed up, but that's the rhyme. It was a good yeah. time. It was just I had actually never been tubing before, so just holding on to that thing. It's like battle toads in that by the last <laughs> stage where you gotta hold on to the ring by your fingertips as this wind gets blown at you. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's like that. Only difference is you're getting swung around on this tube and you don't know how it's going to react you're even go over awake or you're going to start bouncing up and down and oh yeah, it was it was a good time but probably the last time i started well that was literally the earliest i started drinking as of then because about two weeks ago we had my buddy's wedding i probably started drinking about twelve thirty <laughs> before the ceremony so not too much but then it pretty much just started pounding them back and then by you know 11 o'clock i was almost done so <laughs> and then just end up kept going end up at another bar after and then crashed over at his place that night got a cab ride back 
Well, it's good, man. Don't drink and yeah. drive. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I would never do that. True. That's, I think yeah. that's the best way we can end this this whole porn, alcohol, and juice <laughs> episode. Yeah. <laughs> which we could start talking about the green, which I would like, but uh, unfortunately, yeah. I, I got, I got, yeah, <laughs> I got a jet. Dude, I mean, dude, like gonna... I got like fucking three types of weed right now. Like one of them is a is a the Genji from Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking oh my god, man! Like I'm just like oh, I love this weed. And then like I got this other weed, fucking uh, uh, sour diesel, which is one of my favorites. And I'm just like oh, I love the sour diesel. <laughs> um, I didn't want to. Yeah. I didn't want to bring it up, Mike. So you, so you are back on the leaf for the time being. Yeah, I'll definitely okay, man. Like because it, yeah, because because I, I yeah. respect that because it's, it's it's bullshit what happened to you, especially when the yeah. state made it legal. So I mean. I, yeah. I, I don't want to say I thank you or I appreciate it, but yeah, the struggle, the bullshit you went through, and now that you're able to like fully embrace and enjoy it, I salute that, man. Yeah. So. Oh, man. It, it's, you know, like, and I went through so much shit and everything, but now, you know, like, I mean, basically for the listeners, the gist of it is, is I got caught with like a little tiny bag of weed in a pipe driving home one day, and they arrested me for it and mm-hmm. gave me a driving under the influence ticket, you know. And so, like, I had to go through all the things that the alcoholics have to go through when they get caught, you know? Like, I had to go through all the classes and and the Mothers Against Drunk Driving panel and, you know, just, you know, all that shit that goes with the community service, all the fines, thousands of dollars worth of fines. I had to get a lawyer, had to sell my cards to get a lawyer. You know, like, I mean, it was crazy, man. And I went through it. They they definitely put Mm. you through a lot. It's you know, but like, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, it, it was ridiculous, man. You know, and everybody in my alcohol class would always say, dude, you got fucked over, yeah. man. Yeah, especially, especially due to the timing, because like, I don't remember how close it was, but like within like a couple of months, that's when it became legal. So right. you definitely right, paid yeah. your dues, man. So I'm yeah, glad. Yeah. And then, so, yeah, I am back now. And, uh, yeah, so you know, you I, I, I love smoking weed. Like, I think marijuana is amazing. Uh, but I do not drink. I, I do not drink and drive or smoke and drive or anything like that because you really could potentially fuck somebody up, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. But, okay, you got you got to use it responsibly. Yeah, That's, exactly. Yeah. The, the, it, with like anything in life, you got to have discipline. Yeah. And people make such a fucking fit over pot in the begin with. But anyway, anyway, look. The, the point is, unfortunately, we got a jet, Mike. Thanks for hanging out, man. We'll definitely have oh, you back yeah. on. In, in fact, oh, if, yeah, if man, you and Tim want to come back on, we'll finally get around to that wrestling episode. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, definitely, yeah. you know, that's more Tim's thing than my thing. Like, I mean, dude, like I, I stopped res- watching wrestling years ago, you know, and like I, oh. I still like wrestling kind of, but like I don't really like where they have taken it now, no, you know, yeah. like because it used to be more violent, it used to be more in your face, and and used to be oh. more about like chicks and stuff too, you know, like and now yeah. it's just been, like not, you know, and, like I mean, and like now I, it's, if you think about let's wrestling, have Triple H bury everybody. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. Like, you know, like, I mean, if you think about wrestling from the 80s, it was very uh, sexist and racist, and, and they, oh. you know, talk shit about people from different countries and shit, you know? And like, <laughs> you can't get away with that. You know, like, yeah, one of their yeah. big heels was the Iron Sheik. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, yeah, I miss the Iron Sheik, man. Oh, the Iron Sheik's Twitter is hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. yeah. He's a funny guy. Hashtag sure. forty four million believers. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> that's his catch. That's his catchphrase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, either oh, way, man. man. Uh, like you know, good good times this afternoon. So you're more than welcome whenever you got a chance to bullshit, man. We'll we'll uh, we'll love to have you back on, man. Yeah, I, hate, I hate that we got to cut it short under these oh, yeah. circumstances. Yeah, but, it's a real uh, shame it had to sh- we had to be short here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Oh, again, yeah, man. definitely. Yeah, I definitely appreciate coming on. You know, we'll definitely do it again in the future. And and uh, you know, like if anybody wants to, you know, look at my old videos. I haven't done any videos in a while, but they're over there, Sinister Moon on YouTube. Hmm. And uh, like I said, I, I hope that uh, Tim and I get it back together and and uh, yeah. do more episodes of OKS here shortly. Well, yeah, cause so. the last time we tried to do the wrestling episode, I was not even home because I was out that was the first wedding of the summer I was at. <laughs> right. And it was like and then we're like, oh well let's do it after WrestleMania and then nothing came of it. So it's, Right, right. Yeah, you know, well I figured what we'd do is we'd all watch WrestleMania and then we'd have something to talk about, you know? Or you know, yeah. or maybe we'd do it before WrestleMania and have like predictions or something, predictions, you know? Predictions, yeah. And so like fucking but that didn't work out, man. And honestly yeah. I watched like the first half of WrestleMania and I found it completely boring. And I'm just like, man, this isn't what it used to be. 
And so I skip forward and, you know, watch some of the end, end matches and stuff, you know. But, like, I mean, it, uh, I, there wasn't a lot there for me to talk yeah. about. I basically just summed it up right now. So Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and no plus, like, it, it's, it's always, in. like, a, uh, it, it's always hard to match everybody's schedule, you know. Like, I mean, yeah. it, you know, yeah. some people are on different time schedules and everything. Like, I think you guys are, like, a couple hours ahead of me or so. and uh, right, some, I'm, you know, and like, so, and, you know, some people like, you know, the, the problem that we always had, like, you know, a lot of people were like, dude, you should get like loose Luke Morse one on, or like, or this guy or that guy or whatever. And it's like, well, you realize that they live in a different fucking hemisphere, right? <laughs> They're going to be like 12 yeah, hours ahead of us. You know? like, <laughs> and that's because the only problem we had with LMG, cause he's in Australia and he's yeah, about 14 hours and Scotland. ahead. It's just, right. Yeah. So it was, Yeah. Yeah, it worked yeah. for a while, but it's just, you know, all those different time zones are, are it's mm-hmm. hard. It's hard. Like, it's hard yeah. with just the three of us. I mean. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if, if, if you listen to this, you already know who Sinister Moon is. But either way, check out his YouTube, hit up the forums, and pester Tim. Because you know OKS, they're on hiatus, but they'll be back. You know, there's no, there's no rush. you got to do this stuff when it's right. It's all about having good conversations and good bullshit. So oh, yeah. You can't, yeah make it into, you can't make it into a cookie-cutter show. But uh, either right. way. It'll all be good in time. If not, we'll come back and we'll talk about porn and pot more. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good episode. Yeah, there, porn yeah and we can talk about that all day. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, uh, we're not doing games we've been playing because of the time. And mine is, my list of games I've been playing is longer than Joel Gertner's lunch list. Hey, I bet I could give you a run for, my, a run for your money. I've actually been playing tons lately, so... Hey, Maybe. Probably nobody will get that, but I got it. That's a good one. Bow tie and all, yep. right? <laughs> Yep. Neck brace and bow tie. And we'll, we'll close this by saying hashtag whiskey dicks. But, uh, <laughs> there we go. But, but, Pound but, whiskey dicks. But, Chrono, there's only one way to take us out. And I think you know how to do that, my friend. This is Chrono Like 9 saying, end of line. <laughs>